There's an, a, a thought, uh, I'd like your reflection on, in what I call the Walmartization of, of wages in theater and the arts in that uh, I've watched the wage scales go down, I've watched televisions go down, uh, what you are paid. So even someone like me, I'm forced to, you know, I can make a little money here, but I have to do a narration, I have to be looking something else. So I spend so much try time trying to get little pieces of money that the creative time starts to disappear. Yeah. Uh, and those arts that can get money flowing to them, so it's all creative time, and it's, gone, it's going to music and opera as well, are roaring ahead in English Canada and the theatres are maintaining themselves or falling back uh, because there's not th the financial money to them or the arts time just for artists to create instead of yeah. I've got to get a, a you know a voiceover in a cartoon so I can make some money. But, but this, I mean, this, uh, it's, it's connected, I mean, uh, I don't want to generalize here, but uh, one of the reasons why my company, Ex Machina, for example, that's what I want to talk about, yeah. Do and can afford doing what we do. Um, is because we very early on we we did not count on um, local economy. We, we did not count on funding from the governments. Of course, they gave us they gave us money, very little money at the start, and they still give us very li little money compared to what we. But we very early on were interested in traveling the world and being co-produced by important festivals around the world. And there is a network. There's money out there outside of Canada, outside of North America loads of money where they just give you the check and they say come back in five years we want to be the first to present what you're going to do that exists but people don't want to take that chance they want a they, they want a, a, a local local logic uh, economics to solve things they have little, the subsidies and this is how many plays we do a year and, and they, they want they want um, um, they want this has to be a recipe there has, has to be a, a cookbook or uh, rules and Fine, but if what you do is not in the shape of a pear, <laughs> if it's in the shape of a dinosaur that year, well, then you need to have the money for the shape of the dinosaur. And another year, you're not doing anything. Well, then you don't. And no. when did you realize that? When did you realize you had to set, set up something like Ex Machina to work out of not only a creative hub, or as you say in Quebec City, where you can create, but a financial system that you can actually continue well, creating? Was, we were part, when I say we, because there's a couple of us who, who were uh, in Ex Machina who were uh, in the original Théâtre Repair company that did the Dragon's Trilogy. <clears throat> Circulation and Vinci and all these other things when I started. And the company uh, very quickly established itself as a very important creation company in Quebec City. So suddenly we had, we got a lot of money from the government. Not a lot of money, but you know, promising that one day we'd get a lot of money, but we had to start at the bottom and all that. And we were in this kind of plan. We had there was a plan that uh, the company was gonna go move from this to this to this to this to this and it just wasn't interesting. We just didn't have the shape of the stuff we were interested in. We were interested in doing seven hour shows. We were in, in uh, you know, we, we were interested in uh, something that was much freer than the usual, well, now let's do a play and it's this amount of weeks of rehearsals and this is the amount of this and this is how it's, what it's worth and this is this ticket sale and then there's a PR. Uh, I mean, it's, just, it's something that just didn't interest me anymore. So. Yeah. So we kind of, we left that structure. A couple of us left the, the theater of our structure and, and decided to go and create our own thing that would not be can whether we get money from the government or not didn't matter. Let's do our thing. We've been traveling. We've been meeting with agents all over the place. There's money out there uh, for culture for what we do. There's a demand for what we do. Let's go for it. And and right now we're the only company um, in in Canada. Uh, I mean we we receive twelve percent of what it costs to produce, so the money that we get. 12% is subsidized. That's nothing. It's 92% in general. We receive 12% of money from the governments. All the rest comes from Tokyo, Berlin, uh, Mexico, whatever, you know, whatever is the... Uh, and and who, f who worked this out financially? How do you find a financial? Did you do that, or do you have financial? No, I, I, did, I, did, I did not do that, but uh, Michel Bernacci and, and people working with Michel Bernacci, who, who's, who's my producer, who, who, who's been accompanying what, what I've been doing from the very start. Uh, at one point, you know, by, we started touring, and then discovered that in London there was this big interest in having me direct something with Quebecois artists and Scottish actors. Okay, well, where does the money come from? Oh, it comes from the uh, uh, European, uh, 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 Glasgow European city. Uh, 
So okay, so then in Glasgow that year has gazillions of money, and they want they don't just give it to local artists. They, they're interested in having their artists work with people from abroad, and we discovered that, that that's how the world works out there. And yeah. here we are in Canada <laughs> with our little rules and thinking that and, and actually being being asked to be efficient in a certain system and all of that. And I would say, well, if you have a cake mold that's made like this, the cakes you're going to produce are going to be made like that, all of them, whether they're, whatever they are, whether they're a Shakespeare play or they're a creation or they're a Michel Tremblay or whatever, yeah, they will all look. So you have to break the mold. You have to say, well, let's invent a mold that stretches, and depending on the project, depending on who we're working. Confidence. Well, you see, you yeah. come at it with a Quebecer sense of confidence of who you are, of what you want to create, and I don't want to go by the rules of the commercial system. I'll make some rules yeah. of my own. But, uh, but yeah, but confidence, confidence after uh, experience gives you confidence. But you have to go through these experiences. You have to also a couple of these things don't work. For all these things, um, you know, you end up with a big deficit, and all these things happen. But then eventually, and I mean, a good example is, for example, Cirque du Soleil. So they has confidence. Exactly, yeah. But they started at, you know, just a bunch of hippies who wanted to continue to have fun. They didn't want to burden themselves with <laughs> becoming rich, <laughs> you know, and billionaires and going to outer space. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they didn't want to, at the beginning. And what was the budget of the Cirque <laughs> show that you did in Las Vegas? Uh, the budget, okay. We have to be fair about this. It's the most expensive show of all times, so you know that. But it's not my fault. Uh, I mean, just a little, it's just that it ended up, I think the last count was $224 million. But, but the, the, the uh, Cirque, du Cirque du Soleil show is $30 million. Uh, for not, not the touring shows, but the shows in Vegas or in Macau or in Dubai, the big shows they do what they call hard circus, the, the, the shows that don't travel and that are part of a venue. Uh, are about 30 million, 30, 31 million. So uh, that's the budget we have, 30, 31 million, something like that. Of course, the presenter has to build the theater for your show, and he has his own thing going on. And they were supposed, that was supposed to cost $60 million. It became 70, became 100, it became 150. And at the end, it was 200 and some million. So uh, that's not my fault. That's the part, Cirque du Soleil, never, never. But the confidence of Guy La Liberté that goes to Vegas and says, you want a show by Cirque du Soleil, you want to make money, using our show to draw people to your casino, fine. This is what the show costs. You are never allowed to walk into the rehearsal room and say what you think. You have no artistic input, sign here. And people say, oh no, no, that's not how it works in America. Well then, goodbye. And he's always managed. I never had suits at any rehearsal. I never had anybody from MGM Grant, and I'm saying this, I don't, I don't want to, uh, dismiss them. They're actually very intelligent, very cultivated people. The people at MGM, actually, you know, they're cool. But the things that we never had anybody come in and say, well, you know, our audience. No, you're not allowed to even enter the room. What was that man's name again? I want every student who listens to this interview to hear this man's name. Guy <laughs> La Liberté? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is important. Okay. Well, the things that. Guy because the confidence that he expresses mm -hmm. uh, financially yeah. for the creative process mm -hmm. is really. Important, yeah, right? Well, because it probably, it, but that's what I mean. But the, the comments comes from the experience of touring with, with what they call a soft circus, with touring, knowing that they're doing something right, and that what they're doing right is that they don't have any stars. The star is Cirque du Soleil, okay, which is completely when in the film world that has tainted all all other entertainment business, it is it is star rid rid. rid so driven. Driven, driven yeah. So, uh, your, oh, you, your, your film sounds fantastic. Who's the main part? That's the only thing that's important. So that, that, that's the rule of Broadway, that's the rule of anything in entertainment now. Cirque du Soleil is completely counter that. And From the confidence of a Quebec model. Well, they said, you know what, we're doing something, and the star is the ambiance of that top. It's what goes on. It's the sensuality. It's the excitement. It's the discipline. It's the performance. It's the, the youth. It's, the, it's the, 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 uh, the, the, the peaceful quality of what we're doing. And that's the star. And things that have never been seen before. So when Guilherme Liberté sits in front of you, he, he hires you as a director and a designer. He doesn't say... Uh, we want you to do this and that, and this is proven to be a nice recipe. No, he knows that you have to come up with something that has never been seen before. So you, you're, you have to 
complete freedom. So they give you all this money and they say, try to do something you've never done before. So you start doing stuff and then they come to you and say, oh, we've seen this before, we don't want, to, we don't want something that's been rematched. When all of the system, the entertainment industry is based on, give me an assurance this worked before on something else, give, give me an example. So you say, well, it's a cross between carry meets uh, all in the family. Oh, that's true, okay, I get what you mean. So I get the confidence that that's going to be spooky like carry and it's going to be funny and endearing love, all the family, right? But Cirque du Soleil completely sets different rules. They, they, and so, so you end up actually with a huge challenge of always trying to do something that's never been seen or that's new or that's uh, refreshing. Mm -hmm.